Hello, I'm your host, Mackenzie Henderson, with the I'm Me podcast. Through this podcast, I want to show everyone that there is no limit to your success. Today, I have a very special guest, Lauren Olivia, the host of the Our Kids Edition talk show. Today's topic is finding your passion. Hello, Lauren. Hi, thank you for having me on today. Of course, thank you for coming. The first question I want to ask is, what exactly is Our Kids Edition? Okay, so Our Kids Edition is a talk show where we interview people about their jobs, their careers, or how they're making an impact in the the community or in the world. Okay, that's really cool. What inspired you to start your own talk show at such a young age? (laughs) Okay, so I was 10 years old when I started my talk show, and it was actually, it wasn't supposed to be a talk show so it was supposed to be like a gaming channel or something because I used to play Roblox especially during COVID so I was (laughs) like oh why don't I create um like because my mom was like you need to do something that's more impactful or something that can make a difference in the community so I was thinking to myself and I remember I was watching Jimmy Fallon and I was watching The Real and I was like oh my gosh why don't I create a talk show so I called some of my friends over and they were like and I was like, hey, y'all want to do a talk show? And they were like, oh, yeah, that would be so much fun. So I had called them, and they were like, they were on board. So that's pretty much how the talk show became the talk show. That's so cool. I love that you have friends that are interested in the same thing as you. Mm-hmm. It's good to have people want to be involved and help the community. Yes, that's amazing. So you have interviewed so many impactful people like Tamar Braxton, Shaquille O'Neal, Sylvester Turner. I mean, the list goes on. So how do you pick your guests? So we have a brainstorming meeting every week, and we'll pretty much discuss, like, certain guests that we want to have on. And I feel like, so I feel like um, we'll be like, hey, why don't we have um, a lawyer on? Because we haven't had a lawyer yet. Or I'll be like, um... I, so sometimes it's based off of context. So we'll say Shaq was opening um, Big Chicken. So we got a lot of contacts and they were like, oh, y'all should come out to support. So we came out and we were able to get his interview. So it's at the end of the day, it's context and also being able to connect with my co-hosts and talk to them to get their opinion. That's really cool. So you do so much, even outside of your talk show, like dance, volleyball, and I'm sure you do so much other extracurricular activities at school, but how do you balance that? Well, I balance it based off of having a calendar. I mean, if you're, if you have a schedule, it just makes it easier because you're not trying to like, you're not bum rushed and you're not all over the place trying to figure out what days do I have this? What days do I have that? So on Mondays, I know, oh, I'm supposed to go to volleyball. Tuesdays go to dance and et cetera. And I feel like that's kind of what makes it easier for you, especially if you're like, you're doing a lot of curriculars. That's very true. It's always good to have everything planned out because that's how you can forget things and how you can get overwhelmed whenever you don't have a set schedule or an agenda of what you're going to do for the week. So I love that. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have a schedule. (laughs) Yeah. What are some key lessons or insights that you've gained from interviewing all these notable personalities on your talk show? I would say one thing that I get a lot is to always keep trying and to keep pushing. I feel like when you stay focused and you have a goal and you keep telling yourself, oh, I want to do this or I'm going to be the next, I'm going to be able to be here, I'm going to blink, blink, blink. And I feel like that's something that I've been told a lot. And that motivates me to say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So that's kind of the key advice that I always get to, like, speak into existence. Yes, and staying focused. That's key. Don't let anything distract you. If anything, let it motivate you. I love that advice. Mm Mm-hmm. Where do you see your podcast heading in the future? And what are some long-term aspirations for yourself in the talk show world? Well, I would say that, so for right now, Fox News, if you're listening, please, please, please give me a call because I would love to be able to be on the show or have my own segment with my co-host 
for our kids edition. But my main goal is to be able to have it be its own network and to be able to have it franchise all over the world. So it could be like our kids edition in Africa, our kids edition in Asia or Canada. So that's my main goal. And the network name is going to be OKE, standing for our kids edition. Okay, that's great. I love that idea. That would be very good. We have different hosts for each country. Yes, so I feel like, I mean, I'm going to grow up at some point. So I'm not a kid anymore. You know what I'm saying? So (laughs) I have to be able to have it where different kids can be able to get their opinion. Because at the end of the day, it's a show for kids and by kids. I love that. Who are some of your role models or mentors that have inspired you in your talk show journey? Okay, I have a lot of role models. But God will always be my number one because I feel like he's the easiest person to have a connection with because you're always kind of putting yourself out there. That's the person that you tell your goals to and they can't judge you. And then I also have to say my mom, because my mom has always been there for me. She always positions me where I'll be able to succeed at my goals and to be able to meet many, many of the people that I've met. And then my third one will have to be Oprah, because I've kind of studied her and watched how she interviews. Like, I know when Oprah interviews people, she'll pause for a minute to, like, get them to talk more because, you know, you never want it to be awkward silence. So that's a key thing that I paid attention to. So that's what I would say are my three people that I've looked up to or, or inspired me. Oprah, if you're listening, <laughs> hit up our Kids Edition to be on the next episode. <laughs> I would love to see that. Wait, I have a question. Who inspires you? I mean, you started your talk, I mean, your podcast. Well, I started my podcast. It was kind of spontaneous. A lot of people always tell me, oh, you should start a podcast. But I feel like no one necessarily inspired me, but I feel like a lot of people have motivated me. So JJ on the mic, she definitely motivated me to start this podcast. And I feel like obviously my mom throughout life and God but whenever we're talking about podcast I feel like it was something that was more spontaneous it wasn't anything that I got inspired by anybody from but I definitely do listen to a lot of different podcasts and I take from them okay okay so how do you hope that your talk show influences or inspires young girls to pursue their passions no matter what their passion is well, I, to be a uh, first start, I want my talk show not to just inspire girls, but boys, parents, grandparents, whoever you can think of. And I feel like I want kids to know that they can do whatever they want to do. Because to me, there's no age limit of if you want to be the next Beyonce, you want to be the next Mariah Carey, have the best Christmas song, then there's no age limit for that. You, you can be the next Mariah Carey. And that's kind of what I want kids to take away is that I'm giving, our our talk show is giving you the tools to be successful. So I want kids to say, oh, you know what? I want to be a journalist or, oh, you know what? I want to be a doctor, just just the different tools. And that's what my vision is. And I hope that's how we influence people. I love that. And honestly, I feel like your podcast has even inspired me because I see that you never put a limit on yourself just because of your age. And I really love that because I feel like a lot of people, you know, doubt themselves because of their age or they feel like that they can't do anything to their, do certain things to their full potential just because they're young. And that's not true. And you, you model that. Thank you. I feel like it can be challenging and scary sometimes because it's like, are they going to take me serious because I'm younger? But then I feel like, you know, you get so much encouragement. Everyone's just really supportive of you. Yes, that's amazing. Did you ever experience any self-doubt or criticism regarding your age and abilities? And how did you deal with it? If so, so. I've never really received criticism. Like I mentioned, everyone's really encouraging and supportive of you. I feel like, you know, we're the next generation. We're we're the generation of success. So I feel like we, we kind of have the tools 
we take away and we're supposed to make it to what it's supposed to be. And I feel like I've never really had criticism because everyone's always been really supportive and uplifting. That's really good. What advice would you give other individuals who inspire to start their own podcast or pursue their passions fearlessly? Uh, I would say that if you just want to start your podcast, talk show, whatever you want to start, just just do it. I mean, it's the Nike logo. Just do it. <laughs> just put yourself out there. And I mean, the what's the worst that can happen? It's the only positive things that can happen. You just gain more and more followers. So I just do it. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I feel like if you want to do something, there's nobody stopping you. I feel like there's only going to be people who encourage you. And even if there is somebody stopping you, prove them wrong every time. At the end of the day, the only person that stops you is yourself. No one else can really tell you. I mean, they can try to discourage you, but you have to keep fighting and keep saying, oh, I'm going to be there. I'm going to do that. Watch me be in my mansion, whatever you feel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that mindset. <laughs> okay so for our next segment I call it questions from the girls and it's questions that girls have asked that they want answered just about self-confidence style relationships whatever so it's going to be questions for the both of us to answer okay so the first question is about friendships and relationships how do you make friends handle conflicts with your friends deal with peer pressure, and maintain healthy relationships? Ooh, that's a lot. Okay, we, can start, we can start with how to make friends. I would say to make a friend, you just put yourself out there. I mean, to me, it's just, it's great. Like, you'd be like, hi, how are you? What's your name? And I mean, it goes a long way. I remember I met one of my um, good friends from school and that was in my math class I was like can you help me with this because she understood it really well and it ends up I ended up eating lunch with her and talking to her every day so I mean you just put yourself <laughs> out there yeah being nice goes a long way and I feel like joining clubs or just putting yourself <laughs> in positions where you know that you would have a similar interest with the person could go a long way because let's say you love doing art joining art society and meeting people that enjoy doing the same thing as you. That's how you make friends easily at school, at least. You're very right about that. That's very true. Okay. The next question is handling conflicts with your friends. Well, wow. so I would say like, just to voice your opinion. I mean, if you have a conflict, I mean, all you can do is be honest and, um, I mean, you agree to disagree, but I feel like just you have to like have trust in each other and like never try to bring each other down. Try not to be in drama. Too. That's yeah. yeah, drama. That's what you need to stay away from. But if it's your really close friend, I mean, there's nothing that a conversation can't fix. Just talk it out and be honest with one another. Yes, that is true. And I feel like to try to encourage and trust one another, just it goes a long way. Yes. Dealing with peer pressure. Mm. Okay, that's a good topic. I feel like you just have to stay true to yourself. Never change your moral for someone else. If you feel like something's not right, don't do it. And I think that people are always going to try to peer pressure you to do something, but you have to stay true to yourself. What do you think? I agree. I think whenever you're strong-willed and your head is going straight, it's nothing for you to say no. If you don't feel comfortable with doing something, saying no won't bother you. It won't bother your friendship. And I feel like whenever you know something is wrong, you are going to steer clear from it and you're going to make sure that you stay on the track that you want to stay on. And maybe that will encourage your friends to do the same. I mean, I've never experienced peer pressure, so have you experienced it? No, I haven't, but I'm very glad I haven't. I think a big reason that I haven't experienced it is because I keep my circle very small, and I like to surround myself with people who are similar to me, so 
I mean, I don't have friends that would pressure me to do something that I wouldn't want to do because they don't want to do it either. Yeah, I agree sense. with you. I agree with you. I definitely like to have my um, circle small. I, I'm kind of selective on people I hang out with because I just don't want, I always want good energy, good vibes. So I agree with you. Yeah. Okay, the next question is about school life. Tips on studying, maintaining workload, dealing with stress, and balancing academics with extracurricular activities. Okay, we're going to start with tips on studying. Okay, so tips on studying, I would say make it fun for yourself. So if you like to draw, let's say you're doing math, right? So maybe instead of like just doing it with some a pencil add some color use some pens make it spontaneous or if you you're you're an athlete if you enjoy basketball go out with your friends and go study every time you get the question right you get to um, make a free throw or a layup so it's just make it where it's fun for yourself so you'll be entertained and engaged in your study that basketball one sounds fun i'm gonna have to try that for my biology test oh yes Biology. <laughs> yes, I'm in AP biology right now. It is, whoo, it's hard. Yeah, I mean, but you're staying with it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How do you manage your workload? I feel like we talked about this a little bit earlier. So to go into more detail, I feel like when you, okay, so to manage your workload, I would always say just to, Never put too much on your plate. So if you need to take a break, go for a walk. I know I love walking, so it always clears my head. And then when I come back, I was like, oh, this question is not that hard. It's just sometimes when you're all over the place, I feel like it can be a little difficult. Yeah, I agree. And you can also break things up. You don't have to do everything in one day, mm -hmm. especially if you have a project that's due two months from now and you have a project that's due in two weeks, just prioritize and figure out what's more important in the moment and do that at that time. You don't have to overwhelm yourself with work. That's very true. Don't don't try to do everything all in one day. Like break it down like you said. Yeah. The next question is dealing with stress from school. Ooh. Oh, okay, so I would say something that, like, when you have stress from school, I wouldn't call it stress. I would just say it's a lot sometimes. I mean, I did volleyball, dance, and I had to make sure my grades were all A's. So, I mean, at the end of the day, just make sure you have, like we mentioned, have a good calendar or have a schedule so you're not rushing, trying to do everything at once, and so you don't have to, like, kind of, put a lot on yourself and, you know, have your parents be like, why aren't you making these plays? Or why, what's wrong with you in volleyball or dance or you in this activities or, you know what I'm saying? So that's <laughs> yes. At first I thought it was my mom talking. I was like, wait, <laughs> but how do you balance academics with extracurricular activities? I feel like, we can speak on this. I would say just like, I mean, to me, it's really not that difficult. You just, I feel like if you don't have it planned out, you are going to be all over the place trying to figure out what to do. So I would always say have a schedule or have a calendar, or even if you don't have a calendar, just remember the days. And <laughs> I mean, talk to your teachers or your coaches or guardian or whoever you need to talk to to know everything you need to know or right yeah yeah I agree talking to your coaches and your teachers and having a good relationship with them is very important because there's a lot of coaches that assume that being a student athlete is very easy and it's not for some people, but if you have that connection and that relationship with them and you speak to them on a consistent basis and let them know, oh, I have this to do and just telling them your schedule, they're going to be very understanding of you and give you a little bit of grace because of that. So keep a good relationship with everyone. 
That's very true. I always talk to my coaches and my teachers. Yes, yeah, same. I stay in their email. <laughs> so the next one is about fashion and beauty. Advice on fashion trends, makeup tips, skincare routine, and style recommendations. We can start with fashion trends. So I would say for fashion trends, just always go to social media. I mean, people post every day about what's popular. So right now it's fall. So I would say you're going to see a lot of trench coats or, you know, puffy jackets, long sleeves, turtlenecks, what just kind of fall vibes. So I would say it really just go to social media. They give you everything. <laughs> I agree. And right now, I feel like we're finding our style still. Nobody really knows how they want to dress. So going on social media is good. And another place I go a lot is on Shein. Even if I don't know what I want to wear, they know what I want to wear. And they put it in my cart for me. It's so crazy. Yes, they have cute clothes. I love going there. I like to shop. Yes. <laughs> they have everything. They have blenders on there, <laughs> microwaves, anything. It's the online Walmart. <laughs> yes. So what are some makeup tips? What are makeup tips? I mean, I have, so I have a makeup line, and it's called The Blush Factor. And one thing I would say for makeup tips is, like I mentioned, just go to social media or just one thing I remember. I remember I stayed home alone, and I was maybe like, 11 and I was like oh let me try doing some makeup and I was walking around with a star on my eye and <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like you just have to kind of play with makeup and you'll become more comfortable with it and I feel like the more you do it the more you'll know your style so I mean that's what I would say don't walk around with a star though that is what <laughs> I'm going to say <laughs> honestly I feel like whenever everyone starts their makeup it's bad at first and luckily, I had the chance to do my makeup while we were in quarantine, so nobody saw me. <laughs> but I feel like just playing around in it and continuing to do it and learning how your face is and what you like on yourself is going to help you get better at it. That's how I got better. And just do it every day until you're comfortable with how it looks. You don't have to wear it out, but just do it every day. Yeah, one thing I know for me is I, I'm i really natural. I don't like to use a lot of products. I pretty much just use mascara because I feel like, you know, you're beautiful. You have a beautiful face or a handsome face, and I feel like you can embrace who you are, especially with makeup. I feel like it's a great way to show your personality. Yeah, I agree. So that kind of goes into the next question. That's ironic. With self-confidence and personal development, what are some tips on boosting your self-esteem, building confidence, and handling your insecurities? We can start with self-esteem. I would say for self-esteem, just stay true to yourself. Never change who you are for someone else. And I feel like one thing that um, we do as people is we try to make it to everyone else's expectations, but we don't like value ours. And I feel like you're beautiful, you're handsome, embrace who you are. And it doesn't, it's both inner and outside beauty. And then I have, so I know that I have a skincare line and it's called A Healthy Glow. And I, my brand was to help people so they can have um, their skin look amazing or they can feel flawless. So they can walk around and say, oh yes, I did that. I am that. I, I love who I am. That's beautiful. So... How about for building confidence and handling insecurities? I would say your insecurities make yourself. It makes you beautiful. I mean, you. it makes you unique. I mean, I have dimples, and I love my dimples, but, you know, I also have um, my eyebrows aren't as thick as other people, but I like that my eyebrows aren't as thick. So, I mean, if you have an insecurity, just know that that makes you who you are. There are billions of people in the world, and every person has a different fingerprint. So I feel like that's really important at the end of the day. Just don't care what other people think. Yes, I agree. And for self-confidence, I feel like 
being uncomfortable with doing certain things. So try new things every day, even if you feel like you're uncomfortable with doing it, because whenever you continue doing things that you're not familiar with, you're going to build confidence within yourself because at the end of the day, you did something that you thought you couldn't do. Mm -hmm. Like over time, I feel like you kind of even it's good to always go out of your comfort zone so you can feel more confident and be more true to yourself so you know who you are in the future yes and for handling insecurities I would say that just like you said everybody's different and everybody does have their insecurities but that does not take away from your beauty and it doesn't take away from who you are just learn to appreciate your insecurities and appreciate the things that make you different yes that's very true just embrace who you are, and I mean, you're different from everyone else, so be proud of that. Yes. Ooh, this is a good one. Social media and technology. What is some advice on managing social media, dealing with online cyberbullying, and staying safe online? So I would start off to say managing social media. I would just say, take your time. Don't be on social media 24 seven. I got to take note of that because I'll be on TikTok for a minute. But I feel <laughs> like it's, you need to kind of manage your time. It's always good to talk to your parents and have them have you um, maybe like a limit. So you'll say, okay, I have one hour on TikTok or I'm supposed to be on my phone for three hours so okay I can't be on TikTok, TikTok that long I can only be on it for maybe 30 minutes so I can go on Schoology and finish my school assignment so I feel like you just kind of have to manage it yeah managing your time and understanding that you don't always have to be on it I feel like everybody thinks that they're they're like, oh, I can go a day without TikTok, but actually try and do it because I did that last week. And I was like, I'm so bored. But you'll realize at the end of the day, you really don't need social media. And whenever you don't have it, you're so much more productive. I mean, people went without social media for years. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know any different. Yeah, that's, that's really true. So what about for cyberbullying and staying safe online? I would say just talk to your parents um, if or your guardian. If you feel uncomfortable or you feel like you, you're just not feeling the best because someone makes you feel less than, but just know that if someone cyberbullies you, that you're always, like, you're always enough. And... Not only if someone bullying you in the first place, it cause, it's because they have nothing better to do. So just know that you are enough and that talk to your parents or your guardian or whoever you feel comfortable with talking, talking to, even if it's a friend, just to have someone to communicate with. And don't be afraid to block them. That's why the button is there. <laughs> Literally block everyone who's rude or mean on your account because it's your account. Block them. There's no rules against blocking. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Lauren, for coming on my podcast today. Is there anything you would like to say to the people? I would just like to say you did a great job. And I also want to say to everyone listening that I really hope you take, take the advice and take the tools that will help you if you want to start your own talk show or if you want to be a singer or if you want to be a lawyer or whatever you want to be i hope that this helped you in any way well thank you so much for being my very first guest on the i me podcast and guys tune in for lauren's next episode with oprah one free it's, <laughs> it's coming soon well bye everyone Bye. Make sure y'all tune in for both of our shows. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you.